Thank you.
Hi friends. Hello. And good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on when you're watching this and from wherever you are uh, joining us for worship as we connect together like this from each other's homes. We're so grateful for technology and media, aren't we? We certainly are. And so many people are telling us that they've discovered technical skills mm. and gained media knowledge during the lockdown. They've joined Facebook. After having said they never, yeah. ever would. Yeah. yeah. And others have been coached by family and friends and how to use and access FaceTime and YouTube and Zoom meetings. Yeah. And we've certainly learnt a lot about the computer and the internet. We certainly have. And in it all, we are grateful to God for this technology, aren't we? And like so many things in life, we have a choice. We can use it for the good and the right things and the positive things. Or we can choose to use it to be bad and destructive or even hurtful. The choice is ours. And some may say that, that God didn't make the computer, the, the wiring, mm. the microchip, the iPad, the iPhone or, or whatever other eye that you need for these things. No, but this kind of thinking reminds me of a poem that I used to recite as a young lad. I was about five or, or six and I had a, a tooth missing at the front and short trousers and a cute cheeky face. Well, that's no surprise. Well, cute. No, I meant cheeky. <laughs> oh, right. But I do remember that after I'd finished reciting this, if it was at a Salvation Army meeting or, or, or at another event, people would clap and cheer and throw money at the end. Well, people can clap and cheer at home, but, but they can't throw money. Oh, no, but they could send it in, can't they? Or they can do a bank <laughs> transfer. <laughs> well, friends, let's hear this poem that Mark remembers from... 30, 40, uh, yeah, 50 uh, yeah. A long time, ago. a long time ago. <laughs> Are you ready? God has filled the mountains with metals hard and bright. Man has learnt to mine them and bring them to the light. Man has made them into tools, great machines and cranes. But who made man? Why, God made man and God gave man his brains. So let us praise the Father for mines beneath the rocks the whirring power stations, the steamships and the docks, the magic of the wireless, the thunder of the trains. For man made these, but God made man, and God gave man his brains. Now, there's no money that's been thrown, but I'm sure I, I can hear some clapping and I cheering. I can certainly hear clapping and cheering, but, but listen, it's true, isn't it? Um, people made and invented those things, but God gave people the brains and the creativity and the ideas and the knowledge and the dreaming and the vision and the skills to bring about the reality. And a lot of it came out of perseverance. They kept on trying and trying until it worked. So friends, watch this video um, put together by Gary Rose, who featured on one of our services a few weeks back. And he's using his skills of technology and music and creativity to remind us of William Booth's desire and dreams, which is still lived out today, isn't it? As, as we put love in action. Friends, be inspired and do pray for those that we see from various countries. And then we'll sing Send the Fire Today, followed by some prayers from Jacob and Caitlin.
while people quarantine as they do now. I can. While unemployment is rife and hunger beckons as it does now, I'll nourish. While there is a single lonely person, while there is a survivor of domestic violence, while there remains one man, woman, or child troubled by disaster or injustice, I'll pray. I'll give. I will shield. I learn. I'll support. I'll speak out. I'll not give up. I will never turn away. And I'll fight. And I'll fight. And I'll fight. And I'll fight. I'll fight. And I'll fight. We'll fight, fight to the very end. Together. Pray together. Thank you, God, for being with us always. Thank you, God, for the gift of your presence, the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, that you help us and guide us every day. Thank you that you are with us in the really good times and the difficult times too. Send your fire today. Amen. Thank you, Jacob and Caitlin, for the creative way you prayed just then. You know, we can't lose these innovative and creative expressions of our worship when we return, can we? No, we certainly can't. In fact, we've already ordered a trampoline. Um, I haven't told you this. No. And it will be put on the platform at Norwich Citadel. And when we return and have the prayer time after the offering, the person who is responsible for that will get on the trampoline, just like Jacob and Caitlin showed us, and they bounce and pray as they go up and down and thank God for the gifts given. That's going to be great, isn't it? Yeah. Especially if they're holding the money plate at the same time. <laughs> the ups and downs of a trampoline, up and down. Yeah. Well, life can be like that, can't it? Those upbeat moments of joy and happiness and excitement and those downcast moments of despair mm. and pain and fear. To quote Ronan Keating and Boyzone, life is a roller coaster. 
And this pandemic has certainly brought that kind of experience, the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs. It certainly has. In the Bible, we see people who have had those very experiences, yeah. that the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, the good and the bad, the, the light and the dark. And, and they are there in the Bible for us to learn yeah. from. Lessons of life, through their living, we learn lessons for today. One of those characters is Abraham, Father Abraham. And no, we're not going to sing that song. We'll be here all day, but guess what? I know you've got that ringing in your head now. Yeah. yeah. Well, Abraham trusted God through the thick and the thin, the ups and the downs. He was chosen by God to lead his people and to help them on their life and faith journey, to keep them connected to God. Mm. And God promised to make Abraham the father of a great nation. That was an up moment, wasn't it? A blessing. But then Abraham was asked to sacrifice his son, Isaac. Uh, and that was a down moment, despairing. Mm. What's going on? Mm. Yeah. But God taught him so much through the ups and the downs of life. Mm. And in it all, Abraham discovered how good and faithful God is. Friends, watch this video called The Present. This story is found in Genesis chapter 22. And then let's sing together with our virtual worship group, Forever God is Faithful. The Present. God knew that his secret rescue plan could only work if Abraham trusted him completely. God had to make sure Abraham would do whatever he asked. So a few years later, God asked Abraham, to give him a present. Now Abraham liked giving presents to God. He gave God his animals. They were called sacrifices and they were a way to say, I love you to God. But this time God didn't want a lamb or a goat. God wanted Abraham to give him something more, much more. He wanted Abraham to give him his son, his only son the son he loved. Isaac, put this boy on the altar and kill him as the sacrifice? How could God want him to do such a terrible thing? Abraham didn't understand, but he knew that God was his father who loved him and so Abraham trusted him. Early the next morning, Abraham and Isaac set off. They climbed the steep, stony trail up the mountain. Isaac carried the wood on his back. His father carried the knife and the coals. Papa, Isaac said, we have everything except we forgot the lamb for the sacrifice. God will give us the lamb, son, Abraham said. They built an altar and laid the wood on top. Abraham asked his son to climb on top of the wood. Isaac didn't understand, but he knew his father loved him, and so he trusted him. He climbed up onto the altar, and Abraham tied his boy to the wood. Isaac didn't struggle or try to run away. He just lay there quietly and didn't make a sound. Everything was ready. Abraham took the knife. Tears were filling up his eyes. Pain was filling up his heart. His hand was shaking. He lifted the knife high into the air. Ah, stop! God said, Don't hurt the boy. I want him to live and not die. I know now that you love me because you would have given me your only son. Well, Abraham felt his heart leap with joy. He unbound Isaac and folded him in his arms. Great sobs shook the old man's whole body. Scalding tears filled his eyes. For a long time, they stayed there like that, in each other's arms the boy and his dad. Suddenly, 
Abraham saw a ram caught in some brambles. The sacrifice! God had given them what they needed just in time. The ram would die so Isaac didn't have to. And so Abraham sacrificed the ram instead of his son. And as they sat there on the mountain top, watching the embers of the fire die in the cool night air, the stars above them sparkling in the velvet sky, God helped Abraham and Isaac understand something. God wanted his people to live, not die. God wanted to rescue his people, not punish them. But they must trust him. One day, someone will be born into your family, God promised them, and he will bring happiness to the whole world. God was getting ready to give the whole world a wonderful present. It would be God's way to tell his people, I love you. Many years later, another son would climb another hill, carrying wood on his back. Like Isaac, he would trust his father and do what his father asked. He wouldn't struggle or run away. Who was he? God's son his only son, the son he loved, the Lamb of God. God is faithful. What a great song and, and promise from his word. And faithful is a name that we can use for God. Did you do our challenge from last week? Yeah. The A to Z of names for God. You know, some said it got really tough when they got to the letter Z. Yeah. What did you come up with? What, for the letter Z? Yeah. Um, for the letter Z, names of God, I came up with zebra maker, um, zinc designer, and zeal giver. <laughs> well, there's attachment along with the devotions and resources for you all. And one sheet goes through the alphabet with names for God. So enjoy looking at that. So friends, the story of Abraham. A for Abraham. Years ago, God promised this old man 
that he would have a son. And we're told that Abraham loved him dearly. And then God says, take your son, your only son, who you love, and go to Moriah and sacrifice him on one of the mountains. But there's some emotional ups and downs there, isn't there? But God spoke and Abraham obeyed. These stories in the Old Testament prepare us for the coming of Jesus. They give us a hint, a glimpse, a foretaste of what's to come. Do you see the parallels? Abraham loved his son Isaac dearly. And at Jesus' baptism, we're told the heavens opened and God said, This is my son, whom I love dearly. God said to Abraham, Take your only son. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, Jesus. When Abraham arrived at the place of sacrifice, the father placed the wood for the sacrifice on the back of his son. And again, fast forward centuries later, and God the Father allowed the cross to be placed on the back of his son Jesus. He carried the wood for his own sacrifice. Abraham's story has echoes in eternity. God is at work here, preparing the world for the greatest act of love ever made, the gift, the present of Jesus Christ, his son, who lived for us. To show us, every one of us, how to live. Who died for us. So that our wrongdoing could be dealt with, so that we could be forgiven. And he rose again for us. To give new life and hope and a new beginning. And he's with us today by his spirit. His living flame, that, that divine dance going on all around us and within us. Friends, there is so much that we could say about this story of Abraham and Isaac. We could sit for hours talking and debating and learning from it, but this is just a taster. So do look at it for yourself and spend some time digging deeper into Genesis chapter 22. A strange story in some ways, isn't it? Yeah, because God tests Abraham's faith and we don't like the idea of God testing us do we? What would we have done in that situation? But we have the gift of hindsight. We know God provided and provides. But Abraham didn't know that would be the case. He trusted his God whatever. Yeah, whatever. In the ups and the downs as well. Listen, we'll come back to that story in a bit. But now let's see the latest Salvation Army's response internationally to the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows of COVID-19, the challenges and the opportunities that are coming in these days all over the world. And we'll see the response that is being provided, look, there's that word again, provided by the Salvation Army in the name of Jesus. And then we're going to hear from a father, Mark, and his child, his daughter, Helen, as they share with us what God has shown them through this lockdown. And then we will sing, give thanks with a grateful heart, an opportunity for us to focus on Jesus, the greatest gift the world has ever seen. And then Andrew and I will wrap up our thoughts about a father and his child, Abraham and Isaac. So here's the video from our international headquarters. Here are some of the ways that the Salvation Army has been helping people affected by the coronavirus pandemic in the past week. Distributing supplies of food, hygiene items and other essentials has been a priority all around the world. In the Philippines, this has meant accessing specially set up government quarantine facilities such as requisition sports centres and other public buildings. Local authorities in northern India asked the Salvation Army to help feed migrant workers on a construction site who are left without work when it suddenly closed. Food parcels have been prepared for delivery in Denmark thanks to international funding. In Lesotho and Argentina, Food parcels are being given to those most in need. With the economic impact of the pandemic likely to be felt for years to come, employment support is already being provided in many places. 
The UK's Employment Plus service offers sustained help for those experiencing joblessness, such as assistance in finding vacancies and training to improve job applications and interview skills. Lots of centres have been providing online ministry during this time, and in Uganda, an investment has been made in new media equipment. The team, based at the Salvation Army's territorial headquarters, hopes this will improve the technical quality of its offering, which reaches thousands of people. Holiday camps form an important part of Salvation Army ministry around the world each year. With these residential programs unable to go ahead as planned at the moment, several centres are developing alternatives. Across the USA, games, art supplies and food have been packaged up for distribution to local families with the goal of keeping connected and bringing some cheer during the longer break from school. In Australia, a virtual musical is being arranged. Recordings of participants acting, singing and dancing will all be brought together to create Three Bags Unpacked, a retelling of the story of the prodigal son. The team behind the project believes that one positive of the current situation is being forced to think in creative ways to come up with new and exciting ideas. Stay updated on the Salvation Army's work through the news articles, videos and photos posted regularly on our social media accounts and website. Please keep all those affected by coronavirus in your prayers and for the long-term efforts to support the vulnerable. Well, it has been a strange few months. That feeling of confinement, not seeing family and friends, not cuddling family and friends, no sport, no haircut until today. In fact, I don't think my hair has been as long as it has been in the last few months since the 70s. That's a long time ago. I've had feelings of anxiety and even depression. So what has God shown me during lockdown? He's helped me appreciate nature in its full beauty. We've had much cleaner air. I've appreciated what freedom means and not to take contact for granted. God is always with me, I know that. Um, but there are times where I perhaps need to recognise that more than others. And I'm always comforted um, with verses from a well-known psalm, which I'd like to share a few verses with you right now. And it's that Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And the last verse says, the Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. What God sh has shown me um, in lockdown is to um, not take for granted the simple things in life and the small things. Um, so the things that I often take for granted, um, like the wildlife and nature that surrounds me. Um, and also my family who know I love them but I quite often take them for granted um, and I've been able to show them even more over lockdown um, how much I love them by cooking um, but God has really shown me that I'm strong and I've got through a lot in lockdown and um, the words that I remember on the days that I have struggles are I'm in his hands. Whatever the future holds, I'm in his hands.
thank you, Mark and Helen. Um, we can identify with so much of what you were saying there. And in it all, we thank God that he has provided. His presence is always with us in all circumstances. Uh, we, we can experience his love and his peace, his, his amazing grace, as it says here. He never leaves us. Even in the tough times, we can trust that he will provide. And that's what Abraham shows us, isn't it? He trusted his father, his God, even in the situation as he placed his son, his only son, on the altar to be sacrificed. What a moment of, of faith and devotion. It echoes the prayer of Jesus 2,000 years ago when he was facing the cross. He prayed, not my will, Father, but yours. And Abraham... Well, Abraham learnt that when we get to that place, a place of sacrifice and offering, God provides. He provides. That's his name. And that's the banner over this story. And providing is, is part of God's nature. God provided the ram. Hmm. Providing is not just something he does. It is who he is. Hmm. He always provides, wherever he is and in whatever situation we are in. He does this because he always knows what we need well before we do. Think about it for a moment. The ram was in the thicket already. God knew Abraham would need it and had already made provision for him. And he does that, friends, for us too. There's so much here, isn't yeah. there? I, I could, I, I feel um, like there's a, an hour sermon yeah. just about to come out yeah. of my mouth, but, but not today, not today. So let's conclude with this. God often gives to us as we give to him. As Abraham gave up his most precious possession, his son, God gave back to him. And in my life, as I look back, God has frequently given miraculously just after I have given something valuable away myself. I'm not going to go into specifics because I, I don't need to and it's between me and my Heavenly Father. But I do believe, I do believe that when God challenges us to test him, he gives and gives of himself. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, we read some great words. Um, Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament and these are some of the last words in that book. So they're the last words almost of the Old Testament. And I think last words are really important to listen to attentively. God says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. You know, that applies to our time, our talents, our abilities, our gifts, our money, our working, our socialising, our interacting, our day-by-day -day living, everything, the whole of our lives given as an obedient offering of love and sacrifice. That's our gift to God. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? And as we do that, we reflect the life of Jesus. Yeah. And God tells us to test him on this. It's okay to do that, to see if he will provide for us when we give to him. Mm. What an invitation. Mm. How can we outgive God? Well, the answer is we can't because he is God. He's our creator, our provider, as Abraham found out. Friends, May you discover this in a deeper way than ever before. That would make these special moments together extra, extra special. He is our provider and we can trust him to provide that which we need, that which is exactly right for us and for our lives in these days. Yeah. That's the assurance, friends, and the promise of his word. Yes, it, it, it really is. So let's listen to Nick. Now, Nick King is the Assistant Music and Creative Arts Director for the Salvation Army here in the UK. He's going to share with us just what God has shown him through this lockdown. 
and then he will sing and play his own arrangement of blessed assurance, which gives us an opportunity to respond to all that we've heard this morning. And then two of our fellowship, Kevin and Anne, will pray with us. Hi, Nick. Hi. Good morning, Mark and Andrea, and good morning to you all. My name is Nick. Um, during this season, me and my wife have found things uh, quite difficult, obviously during the pandemic. Um, we, I've been on rotated furlough, which means I'm not going into the, to the office. I work for the, the Army Music and Creative Arts. Um, and my wife has been working from home full time. Um, we're also having some building works um, done at the moment, which is causing some noise. And um, we are 39 weeks pregnant. Um, so all that, that kind of stuff going on in, in life is exciting and challenging. Um, I'm one of these people that likes control um, and I found myself um, not being able to be in control. But I was reminded, and this is what God is teaching me during this period, um, the letter of Philippians that Paul wrote. Um, he was also in lockdown, he was in, on house arrest um, and he talks about relinquishing that control uh, to God and that's what I've been trying to do. Um, whether it be the, the pregnancy, the building, the furlough, Emily working at home, all that, the combination of stuff and everything that brings, um, just to be able to uh, relinquish that control to God and just go, yep, yeah, it's up to you, and just pray about it. So that's what God's been teaching me. Um, our church that I've been going to, that um, unashamedly contempt contemporary in its style, and uh, when I lead worship, I try and bring in a couple of old hymns now and again and this one is just a beautiful one this is blessed assurance bless you today been and always will be Lord of all. We worship you, Lord of creation, Lord of the universe, 
and Lord of our lives. Lord Jesus, you have always been and always will be Lord of all. We adore you, Jesus, Saviour of the world and of our lives. Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence and your power. We praise you and thank you, Father, Son and Spirit, our guide, provider and protector. We place our lives before you now as a love offering. We trust you, Lord, with every aspect of our lives. We desire to follow your plans and reflect your light always. We, we love, love you, Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. This has been a special morning, hasn't it? Or afternoon. Oh, yes. Or evening, depending <laughs> on when you're watching it. It's been ordained and anointed. It certainly has. Yeah. And Nick, thank you for helping us there. Mm. And we do pray for Nick and Emily in yes. these days. They are expecting their first baby very, very soon. So that's really exciting. Yeah. Um, that baby should be called Joe, shouldn't it? Joe? Joe. Joe King. Oh, that would oh, be good. Dear. <laughs> Also, thank you to Kevin and Anne for our prayer time. They're members of our fellowship here at Norwich Citadel mm. and are also funeral directors here in Norwich. And this has been a very difficult, stressful and emotional time for them. Um, and I know that they've trusted God and I know that he has provided. I also know that they see their work as a vocation yeah. and a ministry, which is beautiful. Yeah. We do continue to pray for all frontline workers in these days. Yeah. And we remember, especially today, those who are poorly in hospital and those who have been bereaved. The virus is still here. And mm. so we continue, friends, to be careful and to stay safe and to do all we can to reach out to others and to keep connected with each other as we show love and care. And by doing that in the name of Jesus, God provides. He certainly does. And thank you, all of you, for providing that caring, loving spirit as you look out for each other and look after each other and connect, yeah. as Andrea says. We hope and pray this time has been helpful, uplifting and inspiring. May we be better people yeah. tomorrow because of today, because the word of God has become living and active mm. in our hearts. And in it all, we give thanks and glory to God for all that he provides. So let's pray and then we'll see and hear a, a wonderful hymn and prayer arranged by Gary Rose using all of his skills again. Abide with me. Let's pray. May the Father's hand keep you from stumbling. May the footprints of Jesus give you confidence to follow. May the fire of the Spirit keep you warm and safe in your walk with God. Today and forever. Amen. Goodbye, friends. God bless you. Bye.